kept me from having surgery. You know, a buddy of Pat, I think the guy at UM uh, invented this. Really? Yeah. A friend of Pagli Rulo's. Uh, Michigan or here? Like here. This year. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Mm. You mean years ago? Or? Years ago. Oh, yeah. I mean, I haven't played in a while. Oh, you used it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. They've hung on. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're nice. They're good. Yeah. They do too. They put the fingertips, pushes that in the fingertips too. Yeah. Brings us. Squashers. Squashers. Kyle, how are we doing today? It's an ultimate meeting. Huh? It's a the penultimate meeting. A what? The second to last meeting with us. Oh. How do you say it? What's the highest P-E-N ultimate. P-I-N-K-Y. Next to last. Yeah. It's very hard to throw in. So it's a lot Yeah. This is my penultimate. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. Yeah. 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 He's had to have opened some eyes to the fact that, you know, hitting the power, you know, the average, uh, is it just, just watching his at-bats, you start to see, hey, this guy is, is different than what we've seen early in the year, or not, not so early in the year, but the parts of the year. And he's doing it against teams that were, the games mean, they're meaningful games. Yeah, I don't think that's so much that matters, because everybody's always trying to get you out. There ain't no pitcher out there that's not trying to get you out. So, doing it at the big league level uh, is important. Obviously, you got to do it against everybody, but um, so that that makes a difference. Um, but it's, it's the big leagues, and if you're doing it here, then shows you that you can. Mm -hmm. Dying with Eliezer getting added to the roster yesterday, is the plan assuming you don't do it today for him tomorrow to with the starter spot open, or is that no, so? No, no, not necessarily. Okay. Uh, I think it's it's you know with uh, obviously Sandy not pitching tomorrow. Uh, it's, it's another arm from the standpoint of like it'll be some type of bullpen game tomorrow. I, I don't think we know at this point exactly what that'll look like. I mean, they play the pretty much same lineup every day, so it's not like they're not a lineup that flips a bunch of righties and lefties back and forth. So you kind of know what you're going to get. So we're not going to trick anybody by starting a righty and going right to the lefty or something like that. Um, it's going to be about more as who we have to use tonight because we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll try everything we can to win this game tonight uh, and use whoever, and that leaves X available tomorrow. So uh, at this point, I think we have 10 guys in our pen. Uh, we should be able to, to be able to at least try to mix and match, put guys in good spots, and give ourselves a chance uh, if we can get through this one. The writers are handing out a couple of awards today. Sandy MVP, Tom Brady for professionalism, Edward Guerrero of the Year. Pablo, good guy. Pablo, good guy. Uh, those awards seem pretty, pretty fitting for each guy. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you have a most improved out there, or you know, all, all kinds of them, right? So obviously, Sandy, I think that's that's pretty clear that for us as an organization, as a team, you know, what he does for your bullpen the day before, the day after. There's a lot of things that Sandy brings, not just on that day. Uh, and leadership, I think, with our young guys. Uh, yeah, I think all of the, all the awards are pretty fitting. During the past week, you made things a little tough on contenders. I know you walked into Milwaukee, you had a pretty good run there. Last night, you beat the Braves. So when you look at what you've done there, do you make, does it make you kind of wonder if you would have had that consistency all year? what things would have been like because you know let's face it you, you guys never quit at all and you kept battling the whole time yeah i think it, it makes you wonder if you know with the way the pitching is kind of end up continuing to be good all year long uh, from the starting standpoint you know if you got uh, a healthy solaire a healthy jazz a uh, healthy avi joey stays healthy anderson stays healthy i mean a lot of what ifs in there so yeah, I do think it makes you wonder a little bit if we could have stayed healthy, would we have been in a better spot to at least fight for the wild card? I'm not sure we were a 100-win club, uh, but uh, 
I do think we would have been in a better spot to be fighting down this last week, you know, with Milwaukee, with Philly, uh, San Diego, and that same same type of realm uh, of being at least in the mix. Don, I know it's only been a short time since Jesus Sanchez came back up. Any change you notice at all in his swing or approach? Um, I, I can't say a whole lot at this point. It's only been a couple of games he's played. Obviously, he swung the bat good last night. Um, and I think the consistency of that is really going to be the key. Um, but obviously, Jesus is very talented. Right? This guy's got a chance to make a big impact on your club because just the power he has and what he can do physically. Um, so if he can be consistent with that approach, he can be a, a big You know, you talk about just adding the guys we talked about with Soler and the guys. And if you would add Sanji being consistent all year long and Daly being consistent all year long, all of a sudden your lineup looks a lot different. You know, you got guys just hitting down in that 7 8 spot and just, you know, just, it's just a different look. So I think it's very important, you know, for the organization if Sanji can have that consistency. I, I can't think, I don't think we've seen two games or three games and said, oh, he's, he's the real deal now, this is going to be great. Uh, but I think we always know there's a chance for that to be great because of the ability. Don, one, one big picture question is you leave the job in South Florida. I guess one big change that's happened since you arrived at the job is disparity in payroll between the Marlins and every other team in the division, where the next closest team is 55 million away, the Phillies are 180 million from Marlins. Can this franchise succeed in this market with such a disparity in the road division? Tampa Bay. They're in with New York, they're in with Boston, they're in with Toronto. I mean, they compete four years in a row. They're in the playoffs now, and they've been, they've been a tough a club to contend with for everybody in that East. So I think if there's someone to look up to, and obviously you don't want to be anybody else, you want to be yourself. But to say you can't with it is not fair, I don't think. Uh, I just think you've got to be better at what you do. In the past, you've coached it. Have you an opportunity to give some of your hitters a little bit of pointers, you know, over the last two weeks or so? I mean, I know you're trying to leave this franchise in the best possible shape you can, and I know that hitting has been the Achilles heel, and everybody that knows anything about the history of baseball knows you were pretty good at it. So, but, you know, well, were you able to wear the hitting coach panel? I will say this. It's a really hard as a manager to get involved too much in the hitting because you just don't have the time. You have to be in that cage with guys. Uh, but in our player plans, as we've left and, and talking with guys, we pretty much, you know, you let guys know where you think they're at and what, what the ways they can improve. So in that way, you, know, you try to. Uh, but from the day-to-day -day stuff, it's really hard. It's just if you're not in that cage dealing with that guy every day, it's really hard to make an impact on your hitting. Everybody points to Tampa Bay like you. All the small market. Is that realistic material? I mean, the outlier or, or yeah. well, I mean, you're not. I think you have to accept where you're, what who you are, right? And I don't think we're ever going to go compete with LA and, and have a three hundred million dollar payroll or the Yankees or any teams like that. I just think this market doesn't dictate that. I don't think it matters who the owners owners are. I mean, nobody's just going to come in and put that kind of money That's in. Been proven. Yeah, this is not going to do it, right? And I mean, anywhere. I don't think it does. You see it in Pittsburgh. You see it in other places, right? But you can't compete. And, and it's just you have to be better at, like, developing. You have to develop guys that walk into the big league with pretty good players. I mean, and Atlanta's a great example, right? They've, they've got a pretty good payroll. But they walk in with Michael Harris, who's hitting all of a sudden. He's hitting three for him last night. He's got 19 homers. Uh, the kid Grissom comes up and tears it up. They've, they've, they've brought up Alves, who's been out of their system. Uh, they bring out Acuna, comes out of their system. Those are the things that, that we have to be able to do. Is that development, taking players, just all, all, all the above? Or I mean, it's, you, you've seen, you've it's out of my while. realm. It's, it's out of my like, area. For a while. But I, I just think that's, I'm, I'm saying in general, that's where you have to be good. Right? We, we can't afford misses. On, you know, you can't really afford. If the Dodgers have a miss or the Yankees have a miss, they swallow it and they move on, right? We just can't do it, right? And that's where we got to be good about developing players. And so if that's building the system to the point where you can have patience and actually allow guys to develop, 
uh, can actually get to the point where when they come up, they can have an impact, right? Or they can make an impact. And if they can, then they should be able to assist. What pictures have been built, but I guess think of what they've got from outside the system. Of, but they develop. No, pictures of it, it seems like it's, they, we've been able to do it. And really when I got here, there was a bunch of hitters, right? It was Ozuna, it was Yell, Jim Stan, it was JT Riamuto. So, I mean, it's been there in the past, so it's possible, right, to find those guys. It's like trying to match these groups up together where you're pitching and you're hitting. But I think at some point, like you watch, like a Tampa, they seem to, wherever they bring up, they're getting out, right? And, and they're finding players, right? So we, we have to do the same. We don't need to show up your years here. So for us to that. Well, I mean, I've said it a few times. I'm just, I'm disappointed, really, that I felt like we came here to, you know, to build a sustainable product that was, you know, had some continuity to it. Uh, the way we went about our, our business here and the culture and things like that. Um, I'm disappointed that it hasn't gotten stronger um, in those terms. I know there's been changes. I know some of those things I, I don't control, you know, from the changes. It's been a, multiple changes since I've been here. But I, I'd, I'd say, you know, if I'm going to be realistic and look in the mirror, I'm disappointed that it hasn't been better. What, what, what do you think that you've taken away from the seven years in general as an experience that you can grow on? And also the second part of that question, you'll feel pretty good that you navigated the club to the playoffs despite the pandemic. Well, I feel good about the year we were able to make it, you know, and, and I felt like we were turning the corner in that year, right? We were starting to get there. Our minor leagues felt like they were kind of stacked with players and guys that were prospects that we thought were going to be really good. Um, but then we, we didn't build on it. We didn't. We weren't able to build on it, and that's that's been probably the most disappointing part. Is just the lack, of not being able to build off last year. You know, from 20 to 21, 22, um, just not to get us further down the line. Yeah. Uh, just prime a reason for some of the guys when they're you know they're down years outside of the injuries. Returners or even you guys. Yeah, it's it, so. Like the just like you know down seasons. It seemed like whether you know obviously injuries, but it was like most of the guys were like below their career years. Yeah, I don't I don't know what that. It's hard to answer that. Um, I usually feel like if you've heard me say that a lot of times water like, reaches this level. Right? I always feel like guys that are that are struggling at some point in their year, they're gonna get it going and they're gonna click and it's gonna all of a sudden their numbers kind of always get back to their 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 level, right? And so that part has been a bit tough that we haven't been able to produce that. I guess like each of these guys individually there's a reason for it. Yeah, I mean, when you start coming up with reasons, it sounds like excuses and it doesn't feel very good, right? It's just like, I think each guy individually has to be able to look at that, whatever reasons they feel like, and then grow from it. Um, I think there's a little bit of luck involved here, a little bit because we've got to kind of stay out. You know, we're not, we don't have that depth that just says, oh, bring up the next guy and he'll fit right in. We haven't been able to do that. So when we get beat up injury wise, um, it really seems to affect us more than other clubs. You mentioned like end of year meet. Is that like the players just say this is what we're moving forward? Is it like a weird dynamic since? On the way, it's like almost like imparting wisdom at this point because you won't be around. Yeah, I just ripped the heck out of them and walked away. <laughs> I just let it rip down. <laughs> no, it kind of feels a little bit like that, but I always feel I tell them the truth all the time. Honestly, I try to shoot guys straight, be honest with them. Sometimes they like it, sometimes they don't. But I feel like if you're honest, at least I know 10 years later, they'll look back and and go, he's at least too fond with me. You know, if they agree with me or not. It has good shots from the camera. What was your end of year message for Kyle? He hasn't had it yet. We haven't had our meeting yet. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to my last one. Five P's. Have you heard of five P's? Uh, high school, I think. Prior preparation for performance. How about that one? And the kids added a P. This poor performance. This could be sick. So, 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 I don't know what it is, but. On the, on the more light that one might already? No, that one. But I mean, in terms of candy, went with this payroll, this stuff. Okay. And the harvesting character is the cross passing here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, Samson is an interesting guy. The types of players, either players who had like unique skills away from the field. What stands out in your mind? This is an interesting person. I trust you guys. Oh, I don't know. Gosh. Man, you're asking me to put everybody in with one, cut it down to one person. One guy. No, it could be many. You know who's really the most interesting person here that always gives me some kind of wisdom and some different point of view? Kyle. Back to Kyle. Kyle Seelow. He's he's known widely. Uh, Fast personality. (laughs) (laughs) So, so, So let me ask you, with the next few days, now you have a chance to reflect a little bit. It's just about over with. But there's no doubt. I don't think are, things are going to quiet down as managerial jobs open. You know, how ready are you to get into it right away, or is it just something you're just going to take in stride and just go where it goes? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna vacation for about a week with Louie, and I'm gonna let it go, let it do what it does, right? That water reaches its level. <laughs> You are what you eat. There you are what you eat. That's another one. Swing it strikes. You are what you eat. <laughs> Don't swing it strikes, you're never going to hit. <laughs> the game plan. No, so seriously, Anthony, I really don't know. Uh, but like I said, it might be, you know, originally with that, I follow my heart and stuff. I felt like it was the right, I knew it was the right time here uh, for me to, to let this thing go and, and have another voice here. And I feel the same way about it now. I'm going to go home and. I, I know I'll be involved somewhere doing something. I don't know exactly what that would be, but I, you know, obviously I've been part of the game for a long time. You've got this broadcasting on the office work in baseball and field with another team. Well, you know what? I kind of do like the other side of it a little bit, the front office side a little bit. Kyle's offered me a job broadcasting. You know, we're talking about a show that we may do together podcast or something. Ongoing development. But then he told me that he would be my boss and that kind of put a damper on that. (laughs) So, yeah. Uh, (laughs) Is he assessed to be honest? He's the star. Straight talk. And you and Bruce and Kim talked about the front office role here? I've talked with Bruce some about different things. You know, obviously the biggest thing is not just to rush into anything. Just to sit back and let things happen. Uh, you know, obviously those conversations were, were private conversations. Uh, but you know, I was uh, you know humble the fact that you know appreciates my opinion on, on things, and that's that's kind of a nice feeling. So it's not out of question. That can be no, I don't think anything's out of the question. Nothing's off the table. Not that one. Big table. Yes. I don't know if it's a big table or not. It might be a little bitty. Uh, those things eat in the living room. What are those things? Trays? No trays. 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 I think I remember. I think, I think we asked you that last year when the Zoom started early. Oh yeah, we might have. In Cincinnati last year. I, no, no, it was the same song. Was it? No, it was the same one. Yeah. No, that's why I was. Oh my god. I was waiting to see if you were going to switch. I think it may be the only one I've ever tried. How did it go? It probably went. I don't know. I felt okay about it, but I don't remember any of it. So it's one of those you don't remember what you remember. What about the cats? Yeah. The cats are good. No, but are they gonna? They're back. Are you taking a look? No, 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 no. No. We got three cats for you. They're good where they're at, sounds like. No, they're good. There used to be four. You know what? There was. There is four. Only three really to hang around. Yeah. Is it like a 
like Where's the little... movie demanding you take him on vacation? I cannot tell you. It's right. private. Yeah. Right. Oh. Don't want that getting out yet. Right. No. No. <laughs> <laughs>